How do we interpret the world around us? Do we really trust what we see? In this series, experience visual and audio illusions, sensory puzzles, and brain tricks from the worlds of art, science, nature, and psychology, and learn why they baffle our senses. Let's explore how our mind works. How much do you trust your vision? Would you say that it is pretty accurate? Or is it incomplete? Unconscious inference or unconscious conclusion is part of a theory on visual perception that says that human vision is incomplete and details are inferred by the unconscious mind to create a complete picture. It's like our brains are adapting to the loss and it is filling in the blanks, sort of like connecting the dots. This was acknowledged by a German researcher named Hermann von Hemholtz. His theory implies that the human vision is incomplete and that details are inferred by the unconscious mind to create a complete picture. The brain sometimes makes assumptions from the eye's perception and these are called motion and depth perception. At times, we believe we see trees or buildings shimmering or moving, or mountains and structures may seem closer than they really are. One example Hemholtz made was the illusion of the sun rotating around the earth. He said every evening before our eyes, the sun goes down behind the stationary horizon, although we are well aware that the sun is fixed and the horizon moves. Optical illusions may show us a form of unconscious inference, but this can also affect our perceptions of people. Hemholtz's second example discusses theatrical performance. He said that the strong emotional effect of a play results mainly on the viewer's inability to doubt the visual impressions made by the unconscious inference. For instance, an actor who plays an old man is an old man on stage for the audience as long as they do not forcibly recall that the program shows that the old man is really portrayed by a young man. They are affected by the emotions he conveys. Another example is how even just the sight of a person is enough to make you feel something without any reasonable basis at all. Have you ever felt this way? You either feel really angry or happy just by seeing a certain person. According to Hemholtz, the formation of visual impressions is achieved by unconscious judgments, which even if we try, we cannot control. Hemholtz said that we form our expectations on the world around us without any idea that it is occurring. We see objects in the distance, and it seems we immediately see the distance. What happens is that we rely on cues from our eye muscles and from our past experiences of distant objects to guide us. These sensations become so habitual, which is why we don't notice them. So remember, if there's something your eyes fail to see, your mind can fill in those blanks for you. Fact, the average human being blinks their eyes about 20,000 times a day. That's a single day. Are your eyes tired yet? Do you like looking at yourself in the mirror? What about scanning photos of people? Can you say that you can accurately see the features of their face? How their eyes are shaped, how their nose points outward, or how their lips curve? Don't be so sure about that. There is something called the flash-faced distortion effect, and it's pretty surreal. This optical illusion has been called one of the weirdest and freakiest brain phenomenon by some people. Before we show it to you, take a look at the faces on this video. They look like pretty normal faces, right? Now, let's view the exact same video again, but this time, Look at the plus sign on the center of the screen. Use your peripheral vision to look at the faces.
So what did you see? Those faces weren't exactly what you would call attractive, right? You will notice that they will seem to appear like caricatures, and some of them will even look deformed and grotesque. The degree of facial distortion is most noticeable for faces that differ from the others in the set on a particular dimension. For example, if a person has a large forehead, it will look particularly large. This method of image presentation, based on alignment and speed, may become a useful tool in investigating contrastive distortion effects and face adaptation. This effect was studied by researchers Jason M. Tange, Sean C. Murphy, and Matthew B. Thompson. They published their results in the online journal called Perceptions in Australia in 2011. The flash face distortion effect was accidentally discovered by Sean C. Murphy. The researchers are yet to explain what causes the effect, but they say it may have something to do with relative encoding. Their research states that by aligning the eyes of the faces, it becomes easier to compare their shape and the relative location of their features, so the differences between them becomes more evident. Even if we don't know what we can use this effect for, it sure is interesting and fun to look at. It's definitely a new optical illusion. Fact. Each of your eyes has 120 million rods, which helps you see in black and white. If you could have superpowers, would you want to have 3D vision? Well, maybe you don't need superpowers for that. Depth perception is the visual ability to perceive the world in three dimensions and the distance of an object. Depth perception happens from a variety of depth cues. There are binocular cues based on sensory information we receive in three dimensions from both eyes and monocular cues that can be represented in just two dimensions and observed with just one eye. Binocular cues give us depth information when we look at a scene with both eyes. Stereopsis or retinal binocular disparity or binocular parallax is using two images of the same scene provided from slightly different angles. Each eye views a slightly different angle of an object seen by the left and right eyes. If an object is far away, the disparity of that image falling on both retinas will be small. If an object is close or near, the disparity will be large. Stereopsis is what tricks people into thinking they see depth when viewing optical illusions like austereograms, 3D movies, or stereoscopic photos. Convergence is a binocular oculomotor cue for distance or depth perception. Because of stereopsis, our two eyeballs focus on the same object. When this happens, the two images converge. Convergence stretches the extraocular muscles. Kinetic sensations from these extraocular muscles also help in depth or distance perception. The angle of convergence is smaller when the eye is fixating on far away objects. This is effective for distances less than 10 meters. Monocular cues provide depth information when we look at a scene using only one eye. Motion parallax is what can provide absolute depth if information about the direction and velocity of movement is known. You can see this effect when driving a car. Nearby things can pass you quickly, while objects that are far away can look stationary or still. Depth of motion is what happens when an object moves toward the observer and the retinal projection of an object expands over a period of time. This leads to a perception of movement in a line toward the observer. This enables the observer not only to see the object is moving, but to also perceive the distance of that object. So the change in size is what serves as a distance cue. There are several other aspects of monocular and binocular depth perception cues, some of them you use every day but you probably never noticed them. Now you know. Fact, each eye has six million cones, which helps you see in color. And that's just in one eye. Did you like French things? 
We don't mean French fries or French braids. What about French optical illusions? Sound interesting? We. Oui. Trompe l'oeil is a French term that means trick the eye. It is a style of painting that gives the appearance of a three-dimensional image or photographic realism. This flourished during the Renaissance onward. Through the discovery of linear perspective in 15th century Italy and the scientific advancements of optics in 17th century Netherlands, artists were able to render objects and spaces in a manner that fooled the eyes. This is one by an Italian painter named Fra Giovanni de Verona in 1520. It's entitled Intarsia Illusion of Cupboards. It conveys the appearance of open cupboard doors using linear perspective. This next one is by Samuel van Hoogstraten, a Dutch artist in 1664. It was made using oil on canvas. This one is by Cornelius Gilbrecht and was made with oil on canvas. It was placed at the Museum Vorschon Kunsten Ghent. This one was attributed to J. Deutsch and is called Plate. It was made in 1774 and is tin glazed earthenware. It was placed in the Minneapolis Institute of Arts. This forced perspective effect has also been used in stage theater set design to create the illusion of a much deeper space than the actual stage. This was done at the Teatro Olimpico in Vicenza with Vincenzo Scamozzi's severe forced perspective streets that seem to recede into the distance. This illusion is also used in Donald O'Connor's scene where he runs up the wall in the 1954 film Singing in the Rain. During the finale of his Make Him Laugh number, he runs up a real wall, then runs at what appears to be a hallway. But it is actually a trompe l'oeil mural. If you want to see fictional trompe l'oeil, you don't have to look any further than cartoons. Many trompe l'oeil images appear in Looney Tunes, like the Roadrunner cartoons, where Wiley Coyote paints a tunnel on a rock wall, and the Roadrunner runs through it. Then usually, what follows is the coyote tries to run after the roadrunner, where he smashes into the hard rock. Fact, there are 10 million nerve cells in your brain. Imagine how many nerve cells are working whenever you're studying for a test. Where do men usually have their hair cut? The barber shop, of course. If you're familiar with a particular trademark of the barbershop, then you'll know what this next illusion is. No, it's not scissors. The barbershop pole is the rotating pole with red, blue, and white lines that is usually found outside barbershops. But before we talk about this optical illusion, let's backtrack a bit. Did you know that in the Middle Ages, hair wasn't the only thing barbers handled in their shop? They actually performed surgery tooth extractions, and bloodletting in these barbershops. The barbershop pole is actually a symbol of bloodletting. Now that we know its history, let's find out how this barbershop pole is also a visual illusion. In 1929, a psychologist named J.P. Guilford mentioned a paradox in the perceived motion of stripes on the rotating barbershop pole. He noticed that the barbershop illusion actually shows biases in the processing of visual motion in the human brain. The illusion happens when a diagonally striped pole is rotated around its vertical axis horizontally. Here, it seems as if the stripes are moving in the direction of the vertical axis, instead of around it. However, Guilford noted the absence of data in his research. In 1935, Hans Wallach published some experiments that were related to the barbershop pole. Since the article was written in German, English-speaking researchers were not able to read it until it was published in English in 1976. A complete English translation of the 1935 paper was only published in 1996. 
Here, Wallach analyzed the interaction between terminal points of diagonal lines and the implicit aperture made by the poles' edges. How does the elision happen? First, let's note that the bar or contour within a frame of a reference gives ambiguous information about the real direction of the pole's movement. The actual motion of the line has many possibilities. The shape of the aperture usually determines the direction of the motion for an otherwise identically moving contour. A vertically elongated aperture has a dominant vertical motion, while a horizontally elongated aperture has a dominant horizontal motion. The individual motion-sensitive neurons in our visual system only store limited information because they only see a small portion of the visual field. This situation is called the aperture problem. When there is no additional information, the visual system usually prefers the slowest possible motion. The next time you see this pole outside barbershops, you'll have a lot to think about. Fact. Nitric oxide and carbon monoxide are two gases that work as neurotransmitters. When you want to see an optical illusion, you don't have to look any further than outside your window. Up in the sky, you'll see Mother Nature's own optical illusion, the moon. The moon illusion has been acknowledged for many years now. Some people say there is an effect that causes the atmosphere to act like a magnifying glass to make the moon look larger. But any distortion by the atmosphere would actually make the moon look smaller. Some scientists say that the reason why the moon looks bigger is all in our minds. Our minds interpret the things we see in interesting ways. For example, if you look at a door frame, you would say it was a rectangle in shape. But if you would draw the outline of a door frame from the angle you are looking at it, it would be a trapezoid shape. Your mind adjusts the door so you see it as a rectangle from whatever angle you see it. This theory is called shape constancy. Let's look at this image. Those two images of the person are actually the same size. However, you think the man that is farther away is bigger, or at least he appears to be bigger. This is because your mind sees the hallway and decides that the person at the back is farther. So, it adjusts the size of the person to make up for the increased distance. This is what you call size constancy. Size constancy happens a lot in our everyday lives. When you look down the street and see a sports car about 50 feet away and behind it, about 100 feet away, is a big SUV, you will know that the SUV is bigger even if it looks smaller when you see it. One theory about the moon illusion states that when the moon is nearer the horizon, we think it is further from us than when it is high in the sky. Since the moon remains the same size, our mind makes it look bigger when it is nearer the horizon to compensate for the increase in distance. Want to know how to trick your mind out of the moon illusion? Bend over at the waist and look at the moon upside down through your legs. Just make sure you have a ready explanation when people who pass by look at you in a weird way. Another explanation that holds the moon illusion is the way our eyes focus on distant and close objects. When we focus on the moon on the horizon, we focus on the moon that is far, far away. The moon overhead does not have the visual cues that tell us how far away the moon is, so we just see the moon as if it was only a short distance away. There are different theories on this moon illusion, but one thing people agree on is this. The moon does not physically change its size or distance from Earth as it moves across the sky. These changes we think we see? It's all in our heads. Fact. Some snails have chemosensors called osphradia in the mantle cavity. These are used to detect chemicals in the air or water. There are times when you just want to disappear. Maybe you're having a bad day. Maybe you're avoiding someone. Maybe you just want to be left alone. Wouldn't it be cool to be able to blend into your surroundings in a flash? Some animals are able to do this. Like superheroes in comic books, they can disappear in an instant. This is called camouflage. Camouflage helps animals survive in nature, which in turn increase their chance to reproduce.
Because of this, some species of animals have evolved into special adaptations that help them find food and keep them from becoming food too. The environment the animal inhabits is the most important factor in what their camouflage looks like. The simplest way is for the animal to match their background, like say the trees or the rocks in the environment where it lives. An animal will not develop a type of camouflage that it does not need or help it survive. So how do animals suddenly turn invisible in their surroundings? First are biochromes, which are microscopic, meaning really tiny, natural pigments in their body, which produce colors chemically. They absorb some colors of light and reflect others. The color of a pigment is a combination of all the visible wavelengths of light that are reflected by that pigment. Animals can also produce colors through microscopic physical structures. These structures act like prisms that refract and scatter visible light so that it reflects a certain combination of colors. For example, polar bears have black skin but seem white because of their translucent hairs. When light shines on their hairs, each hair bends it a bit so it bounces light around it. That is how they get their white color. Some animals reflect two types of color combinations. Reptiles, amphibians, and fish with green colors usually have a layer of skin with yellow pigment and a layer of skin that scatters light to reflect the color blue. Mother Nature sure is an artist. One of the biggest changes in an animal's surrounding is the changing of the seasons. In spring and summer, a mammal's environment might be full of green and brown colors. But in the fall or winter, everything can be white with snow. Brown color is ideal for a summer environment with lots of wood, but it can make an animal an easy target on a white background. Aside from the ability to match their background, some animals also have special designs on their bodies that help conceal them. They can come in the form of spots, stripes, or patches that will match their surroundings. For example, animals that live in areas with tall grass usually have long, vertical stripes. Looking around nature can seem like viewing an art exhibit, don't you think? A lot of optical illusions have been created over time, but sometimes we don't have to look any further than our normal, everyday surroundings. The world has provided us with a lot of existing forms of magical illusions. Sometimes we don't always notice them. Some of them we probably see every day. So it's a great feeling to see these usual things in a different light. So if you want to be amazed, it's easier than you think. Go outside and explore your world.